In a career that spanned half a century, William Murphy Jr. has made extraordinary contributions to medical technology. But perhaps that's not surprising. His father, after all, was a Nobel-winning hematologist. And the young Murphy grew up surrounded by many of the country's best medical minds. I spent much of my youth walking around the corridors of the Peter Bent Brigham Hospital in Boston. And I was impressed with uh, the fact that much of what I saw was antique. After graduating from Harvard and then the University of Illinois Medical School, Murphy's attention turned toward his true love, mechanical engineering. He attended MIT and began to find new ways to combine his medical training with his love of the mechanical. There are so many things to do with the body that are mechanical, and it doesn't take very long to get interested in the whole body and how it works and why. During the Korean War, Murphy worked with researchers from the Peter Bent Brigham Hospital in Boston, refining the first plastic blood bags. I took the first units of blood to Korea, and we took them up into the front lines and transfused there, and I think today, Blood bags are used everywhere for a red cell collection. That was just the start of a string of medical innovations that Murphy developed, all designed to improve patients' lives. Murphy founded a medical products company in his garage that in 1959 became Cordis. Today, it is a leader in vascular and cardiac technology. One of Murphy's first innovations was an artificial kidney that revolutionized dialysis. This barbell-sized unit provided enough surface area to cleanse a kidney patient's blood, but was literally a fraction of the size of dialyzers then in use. His implantable pacemaker was the first physiologic cardiac pacemaker, able to detect the heart's rhythms and respond accordingly. He also developed the first pacemaker that could be programmed externally without invasive surgery. My happiest moments are when I see a technology that I've had the pleasure of influencing applied to a patient successfully. Gonna get out this month. Among Murphy's 17 patents are designs for angiography injectors and catheters, as well as disposable surgical trays aimed at limiting the danger of infection during surgery. For William Murphy Jr., the challenge is not only to design better technology, but to produce it as well. It's quite one thing to dream up something wonderful and then never be able to produce it and put it on the market. That's a waste of time. Um, I believe that you should follow through and make it available where it's needed. Murphy continues to do that as founder and chairman of Hyperion, a medical device manufacturer that makes automatic slide prep systems and reagents. Another company he founded, called Small Parts, manufactures a variety of materials and parts that are used by engineers to develop prototypes. I started Small Parts with the idea that it would serve engineers who wanted to get things done. In 1989, Murphy teamed with his friend Dean Kamen to help found FIRST, an organization to help nurture an interest in science and engineering in young people. I think to have our students in this country open their minds to all of the opportunities in this world is a wonderful thing to accomplish. He continues to be fascinated by all things mechanical, whether in his workshop at Small Parts, tinkering with his street organ, or on the open water, piloting his antique steam-powered tugboat. For William Murphy, Jr., there is still much to learn. The marvel of our world today is we have a lot of information available to us and 10 orders of magnitude more information we haven't yet figured out and what a glorious place it is to learn every day of your life.